let's look at some best practices when it comes to the closing the fiscal year in asset accounting. Uh, the very first thing you should have is a year in closing plan. Right. You should prepare and plan for the uh, uh, fiscal year end, and therefore you should have a formal step-by-step -step document that details every individual task that needs to be performed during the close process. It should be a real formal document, written, printed out with screenshots and all the details that one would need. In fact, it must be so detailed, this document, that anybody can pick up this document and close the year with it. And, and I'll tell you a little story. Um, what happened to me a couple of years ago, I was a consultant. One of our clients called me literally on January 2nd, uh, right after the, the New Year's. I got a call from a client. They said, you need to help us. We have a big problem. Nothing works in the asset accounting system. We can't create new assets. We can't post anything. We can't run any reports. Everything gives us an error message. So I, I logged into their system and I took a look around and I noticed that nothing actually was done with regards to year and closing. So the year wasn't closed, the new year wasn't opened, and none of the closing activities had been performed. And then I found out that the person that normally does it for that client was on extended medical leave. She hadn't been there in, in weeks and there was no document like what I'm talking about here, a step-by-step -step closing document that that they had, and nobody was actually aware of the steps that were necessary to close the year. And so you don't want to be in that situation. You definitely want to have a formal printed out step-by-step -step document, and no matter who picks up this document should be able to close the year with it. That's how detailed it needs to be. So this document or this plan should include a bunch of information, including a detailed timeline. So it needs to actually spell out when this particular step, closing step, needs to be performed. And again, there's a lot of different steps that need to be performed. So for every one of them, you need to specifically say, when does this have to be performed? At the beginning of period 12 or at the end of period 12, at the beginning of the new year or after depreciation has been run. So there's a different, uh, there's a, a detailed timeline that needs to be included in this document. Next, of course, you need to provide in-depth explanations on how to perform this step. And what I mean by in-depth is you need to include screenshots and every setting and every field that needs to be included needs to be explained and you need to provide information about what do I put into this field, what what button do I have to click on, etc. And then also you should point out the required resources. So who will actually perform this step? Maybe not the actual person, but but at least the department, right? So you can say this step will be performed by the asset accounting department. And this other step needs to be performed by you now the general ledger department or something but just so that everybody knows who is responsible for what step in the closing process. And then finally, you also need to point out dependencies. So who do you need to coordinate the step with? What step is dependent on, upon the successful completion of another step? For example, um, you don't want to run depreciation for period 12 unless the capital investment orders or projects have been settled previously. All right, so, so these two steps are dependent on each other. First, you need to perform a settlement that needs to complete successfully without errors. And then you would post depreciation for the last period. So that step is dependent on the previous step. Also, you want to start the closing process early. And when I say early, um, I mean at the beginning of period 12. So a lot of people have a tendency to push the year end close out to the actual year end. And that's not a great idea because the year end closing process is actually a very long, lengthy process. 
It includes, includes a lot of different steps. You need to coordinate with a lot of different people. You can't do that in the last day or two of the year. So, so again, the year end process starts much sooner than the actual year end. Typically, you would start this process at the beginning of period 12. So, so really what you do is you, you wait until period 11 has been closed. Typically, that includes your depreciation, your settlements, your depreciation posting, and then eventually financial accounting closes the accounting period 11. That typically happens within the first few days of period 12. And as soon as that's done, that's when you want to start the year and close process for asset accounting. And a lot of the steps that I'll walk you through can actually be run in test mode, which is exactly what you want to do, right? So as soon as you start the closing process, you start running these steps in test mode because you want to see are there any errors or warnings? Because if there are, you now have the time to address these issues, right? You can actually look at the errors, you can fix whatever is wrong, because now you have the time to do that. If you wait to the very end of the year and then start running all these jobs and then you get the errors, you don't have the time to fix them. That's the problem. So that's why we want to start this process really, really early. Typically, the entire closing process takes about four to six weeks. So you would start it within the first week of period 12, and then you probably close the year the first week of January or whatever your fiscal year is, so the first week or second week of the new year, depending on how fast you are. So I would say most companies are probably within that five week range, you know, give or take a week. Uh, also, SAP is an integrated system, meaning all these modules talk to each other. They all uh, share data. So you're not alone when it comes to closing your module or your asset accounting components. So that's why you need to coordinate and collaborate with the other departments. Um, so, for example, I, I, I mentioned you can't close the asset accounting subledger because before the final settlement run has been performed. All right. So so if you think that, oh, you know what, we have extra time, we can be a little faster than everybody else. We can close the books early for asset accounting. Uh, not so, because you actually need to wait until the final settlement run from controlling has been done, either internal orders or the project system. So that's why you need to collaborate with the other teams. You really need to understand what their closing timeline is so that you can adjust your own timeline. Um, remember that document that I just mentioned, right? That your closing plan. Um, one of the items in that closing plan should be the timeline. And the reason why you want to have that in there is because when you meet up with the other teams, you want to print out a big calendar, put on a table on the, on the whiteboard, uh, and you want to put your closing activities on that calendar and then share it with the other teams and tell them, listen, this is what we're trying to do on these days or these weeks. How does it gel with your closing activities? Right? And that's when typically these things come up when the, the controlling team says, oh, we can't do it there because we're not closing. We're not doing the final settlement run until the day after. So then you need to adjust your own timeline accordingly. Also, people always include the other functional teams because it just makes sense from a business perspective. But people tend to forget to talk to the basis folks, the technical team. Um, I have a client that's a really, really big company. They have a lot of assets. And one of their steps in their closing process is to run a depreciation forecast. And they forecast out, I think, five years or seven years, and they have a million assets. That report literally runs a day, 24 hours. So it's part of their closing process. So somewhere on the timeline, on their calendar, they put you know, the depreciation forecast job on there. So, and it runs for an entire day. So they need to talk to the basis team to make sure that they don't have anything planned for the system. I don't know if they want to restart it or take it down or do a backup or a patch or something that same day that, that they want to run that report. All right. So it's very important, especially if you have things on there that, that require 
um, you know, a very long runtime that you coordinate with a basis team. And here's a list of, of the teams you really need to collaborate with. So first of all, the financial accounting team, you know, the general ledger folks, that's that's obvious. Also the controlling team, um, not just for internal orders, but also for cost centers, because cost centers typically receive our depreciation postings. Um, the project systems team, so if you have WBS elements, capital WBS elements that need to be settled, right? you wanna know when that happens. If you use investment management to control or manage the projects and the internal orders, you also want to include them. And then, like I said, the uh, the basis team also should be part of these discussions. <clears throat> 